everyone, it's Chris. And I'm Wyatt Elliott from Notebook Entertainment. And you're watching Horrorland News. Alright, so coming up this week on Notebook TV, our channel here. Uh, not a lot this week. <laughs> As you can tell, our, our, our week that we promised you last week kind of went a little askew. Uh, so Wednesday, we have Thanks We Hate It, Worst of Nickelodeon. It's going to be a little bit of a long episode. We had a lot to say. We had a lot to <laughs> say on that one. Say. Like, just listening to it, though, I learned a lot. I'm not a Nick kid, so. Yeah, and Alex and I that. are both Nick kids, but from different generations because mm -hmm. we're 10 years apart. So, yeah, we had a lot to say. Um, Thursday, we're going to hopefully finally re bring Review This Day of the Dead. I know we've been promising it, but it kept getting pushed back. Mm -hmm. uh, it got snow. We got snowed in a day. We got frozen in a day. My dog yep. had to go to the vet for an ear infection. Like, life happened, and yeah. yeah. Um, my dog's okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> she's um, right there. <laughs> yeah, she's staring at us. So, we'll go ahead and jump right into our TV roundup. No TV and no beer make Homer something something. All right. So, we watched the second episode of Archive 81. I'm still so sold. Mm -hmm. So it's... invested. Even more so. Yeah, and I, I made a point to mention while we were watching it this time, I really noticed that this show kind of reminded me of a survival horror video game as yep. well. And, of course, going back to the infamous Empty Man yep. movie. But this has done so much better. Like, so much better, you guys. It's, it's, I, I don't know. I can't really put into words exactly why it's better. But it's the it, tension. It it's there's, do... there's constant feeling of mm -hmm. there's something's going to happen. Something's happening. Yeah, Something that was... important is happening. Yeah. I will say that the only thing that I am... If I had to say I, there's something I don't like, there's so much that we have to pay attention to. We have to pay attention to the mystery that's happening in the past, the mystery mm -hmm. that's happening in the present. And then I don't like that while we're keeping track of all of this information, we also have to kind of keep track of, okay, if she's if the camera's not on, then this is information that he doesn't know in the present. So it's like, okay, now I have to keep track and pay attention to when she's got this camera on to know, yes, he should know that, or no, he shouldn't know that, you know? So that's a little annoying. And she was, too. I was helping her pay attention when the camera was on. Right, when the red they, light was on, yeah. she was. She carries it, like, 24-7, but sometimes... Or she'll put it down, and I yeah. don't know if it's on or not. It's frustrating. Like, mm -hmm. that's the only part I don't like is that when we're in the past, sometimes it's just through the film... But sometimes it, it pulls out and we're actually in the past with her. And so that's where it gets a little, okay, well, what do, what is he finding out? Like, how much of this is what he knows and how much is what we're being shown, you know? And to be fair, so far in the two episodes we've seen, they haven't so messed So far, up. right. The continuity is good. So. Right. Like, I'm not cheering for them to mess up. It's just something <laughs> my brain does when I'm watching things. She's like, worried they're going to mess analytical. up. I'm very analytical, I feel like you're invested in the show and you're right, worried. Right, I don't want him to mess it, up. And then he knows gonna, something yeah. he wasn't supposed to because the camera wasn't on. And then that's so just going to ruin the whole show for you. Exactly. And that's what you're worried so about. That, uh, yeah, I get really it. Is. I get it. <laughs> I get it. So we also decided to check out the first episode of yeah. All of Us Are Dead. <laughs> Guys, it was fantastic. So it was good. so good. Oh my god. Right away, I think we were like, whoa, what the fuck? Like, yeah, I knew the, the trailer <laughs> this was going to be an exciting show, but boy, they open up on, um, like, they pull right. in immediately. No like, punches. It's so good. And then it gets so uncomfortable in certain parts because oh, yeah. of what's happening. And then it's, it's like some of these kids are like, very evilly cruel for being very mm -hmm. young in age and it's not comfortable and, and then, uh, but then at the same time it also feels like um a soap opera yeah it feels like know, a korean because... soap opera that's <laughs> yeah. mixed in with this like horrible crime drama that's mixed in with this zombie movie it's fantastic it's kind of got a little of everything so, so far, fantastic so. i have my favorite characters already so yeah i hope and... they survive Right, and these zombies are they're the fast zombies, which is always more exciting, but then these are also like they're like super strong. Too. Yeah, super and strong. Boy does this one move fast in the, in the face. I really like the effects they did to get mm -hmm. the, the zombie movements and stuff. Oh, yeah. I yeah. It I don't know if cool. it's all just acting or if they added effects, but it's it's good. I it like looks it. like a little bit of both. It looks Probably. Like a bit of both. 
<laughs> yeah, so it, it's really good. Definitely check it out. It's on Netflix already. Yeah. Unless it they... just started airing, I think, Friday. Yeah, I think it's like number one on Netflix already right, right now. Yeah, so... it's fantastic. Yeah. You probably are already watching it. Mm. or already got all the way through it. It's... We only watched one episode yeah. because we're... Very busy, but... But, for those who have seen it, zombie in a suitcase, am I right? Right! That scene! <laughs> I'm not going to say any more than I that. I really but... wish that it had opened, though, and yeah. we could have seen it all folded up. Like, well, it, it could then... still come back, we don't yeah, know. We like, don't know, exactly. So. But, yeah. um, and then the third show that I want to talk about, we watched the first episode of The Woman in the House Across the Street <laughs> from the Girl in the Window. I want to make sure to get that right. Also on Netflix... Mm -hmm. I loved it. It's fun. I loved yeah. it. I love Kristen Bell to begin with. I think she's oh, just yeah. simply adorable. Sure. So I was going to give this a shot anyway. But yeah, and it's I, so good. And so I like good. spoofs and parodies. And yeah. in the trailer, I was hoping it was going to be. And it is. It, it's very It's much, very, you yeah. got to pay attention. You got to listen because a lot of the humor is they play it straight. Yep. They're going to play it straight. It's not played for laughs, but it is for laughs. I want to know how many casserole dishes this woman owns. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, it's one, a half episode, <laughs> one half hour episode we watched, she broke three. <laughs> like, I, But it's part of the joke. I, I know, I but think, like, it's, it's know? how many does this woman have? Yeah. But it's also, it's a very sad movie moving in in parts too because there's law there's certain loss that happens mm -hmm. and like but well, yeah you can definitely see the influence where it's like the woman in the house across the street or the or the woman the in the train or the yeah. girl in the train yeah. and like all those movies yeah and, and i we, i suspect and i'm not a fan of the show i haven't watched it so it's only my instinct of pop culture but i feel like there's a little bit of you in here he so. looks like an older version of what's his face from you and, for sure and that might be why because joe I just he looks got like this. an older version of joe for mm -hmm. sure <laughs> and i'm also suspicious that he's got such an adorable daughter like his daughter's really cute so he must be a serial killer right like well. he must be but yeah, I'm I'm very excited to continue all three of these shows. At this point though, from just watching from an outsider's perspective, I I would be like, well, Kristen Bell's probably more the serial killer because she's right. always acting really weird. Right. Well, <laughs> she really does. This yeah. poor guy's probably innocent <laughs> and just this nice guy moved right. across the street. I also love that she's reading a book that's like the woman in the house across, across the, the lake. lake. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I love oh, it so great. much. And her, her drinking wine is the funniest damn thing I've ever seen. Right. Like, if you can fit it all in one glass, then you've only had <laughs> one, one glass. glass. I mean, fair. Hilarious. That's fair. Yeah. So this is more of a horror comedy, but For really sure. good. Really yeah. funny. I loved it. Definitely check that out if you haven't. But I think that was also trending already on Netflix. Oh, yeah. So I hope yeah. so. I hope so. All right. So let's move into the news segment. And our first news story, we're going to talk about Texas Chainsaw Massacre has announced that John Larroquette is returning to be the announcer, not the announcer, the, the narrator. Over the narrator. Hey, I'm all for John Larroquette coming back, so that, that's fantastic. And they also released a poster, I believe. Yep, they released a poster, and then a new trailer is supposed to drop tomorrow on the 31st. Ah, uh, one day to too one late, guys. One day to, Yeah. <laughs> But check that out. We'll make sure we share it on our Twitter and yep. stuff. And, and then reminder that the movie airs on Netflix for February 18th. I can't wait for that. No, no, no. All right, so next we're going to talk about the debut of the Evil Dead game has been pushed back. It was supposed to be released in February. It's been pushed back to May 13th. Oh, well, I guess that's not too big of a push. Yeah, but. it's not that bad. But no. I'm excited. If they're going to fix bugs or whatever and make yeah. it a better game, then okay. Exactly. Uh, it's If you don't know, it's from Boss Team Games and Saber Interactive. And according to the official uh, description, this will be a co-op and PvP multiplayer experience that lets gamers, quote, work together as a team of four survivors exploring, looting, crafting, managing your fear, and finding key artifacts to seal the breach between worlds. Hmm. Now you can also, there's another option, uh, so players also have the option to, quote, take control of the Kandarian demon to hunt Ash and his friends while possessing deadites, the environment, and even survivors themselves as you seek to swallow their souls. That's how I would play it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the mode I would play it. This is, I'm, instinct to, I'm instantly transferred back 10, 20 years when I was co-op playing games and we'd have our little nerd video games, we'd all bring our computers over and they'd all get mad at me because I would just fuck around in the game the whole time. Leroy! Dragons! 
Oh my god, he just ran in. I'd be the dead eye possessing everybody exactly. and just yeah. That's the mode I want to play on. Yeah, yep. I can already tell. But it's a, I, it, but it's a lot of fun though. Yep. Now the, the the managing your fear is interesting. I wonder right. if it's gonna have like a fear bar. It's a, that's what I'm thinking. It's you know? probably it's gonna have a fear bar, and, and you gotta if you go too high, then you have a heart attack and die. Like that's only fair. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, at this point, I'll try it. And then our last story, and this one excites me because I'm a super fan. Stephen King has a new book coming out in September. I'm going to scare the hell out of you. Uh, September 6th. It's called Fairy Tale. Interesting. And here's the description. Charlie Reed looks like a regular high school kid, but he carries a heavy load. His mom was killed in a hit-and-run accident when he was 10, and grief drove his dad to drink. Charlie learned how to take care of himself and his dad. Then, when Charlie is 17, he meets a dog named Radar and his aging master, Howard Bowditch, a recluse in a big house at the top of a big hill with a lock shed in the backyard. Well, that's never good. <laughs> well, I mean... <laughs> Sometimes, strange sounds emerge from the shed. When Bowditch dies, he leaves Charlie a cassette tape telling a story no one would believe. What Bowditch knows, and has kept secret all his life, is that inside the shed is a portal to a parallel world where good and evil are at war. Ooh, if he gives him a cassette tape, okay, like, is this taking place, this this might not be a modern day setting. <laughs> like, I'm, yeah, maybe well, it's like in the yeah. 80s or early 90s. It might be. It might be, yeah. Either way, I'm down to read a 90s book. So. It definitely feels like a Stephen King story, for, though. I mean, just hearing the synopsis, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like... <laughs> I'm, ex- I'm going to read it. I'm going to, yeah. for sure. Yeah. So, go uh, <laughs> September 6th. Put in your pre-orders now. I'm sure Barnes & Noble, Amazon, your local bookstores. Please go to your local bookstores. Mm-hmm. Have them reserve it for you. Um, but, yeah, go ahead and get it because it's Stephen King. It's probably going to be good. <laughs> at least interesting. At least interesting, yeah. <laughs> the ending might suck, but they'll fix that in the movie. It'll be fine. All right, so let's move on to Indie Film Spotlight. My advice to young filmmakers, make a movie every week. Make films, no matter what anybody says, and you'll be a filmmaker. All right, so again, um, we want to be transparent um, that this short film does feature an actress that has worked with us and has uh, done quite a few of our FML yep. episodes. We love her dearly. Her name is Kaylee Williams. Yep. And uh, so what she happened was... She had a girlfriend was, on the set of our... <laughs> she did. They are so cute. We made love on the set of our... It was great. <laughs> they really did. Um, their first kiss is in the FML episode. <laughs> but anyways, aside from that, um, enough of her personal life. Right. But uh, she um, posted... She was in this movie, and she just dropped a couple days ago, and I happened to see it in her feed, and so I watched it. And I was blown away by it. Like, and it was I, a really good little short. It was really, yeah, it took me by surprise. And so I was like, okay, I think we should feature this. Yeah, she liked it. Two minutes and 18 seconds, I mm-hmm. think it was. Yeah. And I just, so we can't say a lot about it because it's so short. So yeah. short. But It's called Venus. Mm-hmm. It was released on the 28th of this month, so it was just released. Just dropped. Um, and their description on it is, an offer of roadside assistance goes sideways in a bad way. And boy, <laughs> is that description does not cut it. <laughs> no. Like, yeah, so she's, her car's broken down and it's creepy guy kind of pops yeah. up to hide and help her and that's all I can that's say. That's all we can really say. Yeah. But it's, yeah, the Watch ending it, is though, fantastic. Watch it it's worth your time and uh, yeah, please support crazy, it. Crazy Little Monster is their YouTube channel. Yeah, check. I was checking out their other films too. Please check out their other films on there. There's not a lot of content yet, but there are They're, obviously yeah. been... They got ideas, out. clearly. They got ideas. Because I really would. I would watch a longer version of this. Yes. Of this girl and the car and everything. And her, I would. I would watch a, a full length of this. I would, too. In fact, that's what I thought. The minute it ended, I was like, I'd like to see this road trip continue. Yep, I, would, I would like to see the yeah. mayhem. Yep. Uh, yeah, guys, uh, Timothy, I believe the director's <laughs> name yep, is Timothy. Written and directed by Timothy Troy. Yeah. Produced by Will Eichler. Starring Kaylee Williams as Violet and Logan Hewlett as Ben, I believe it was. Yeah. I forgot to write down his oh. character's <laughs> name, but uh, yeah. I think it was Ben. He'll be fine. Uh, but yeah, check it out. It won't take any much of your time. And please leave it a like. And some, check out his other channels, videos. Yeah. Like, if you like horror, that's what it looks like that they're doing, guys. So, um, And Timothy, get onto that feature film. Yeah, version. make a whole... <laughs> I would watch it. I was very intrigued by this little... I would take this and, and take it to like um, Netflix or something and be like... Hey, check right. this out. Yep. Like, but, I have ideas. <laughs> but you have to keep Kaylee in the park. So. Yeah. <laughs> She's <laughs> so, adorable. It's only stipulation. Yep. 
Again, I'll leave a link for all the stories we talked about in the yep. description below. Please like and subscribe on this channel as well. So, uh, so make sure you get all of our content that's coming out. Uh, and uh, welcome, Tim. I saw you subscribe to our <laughs> channel. We appreciate that. Um, and uh, yeah, so thank you guys. I think I'll shut up right now. All right. Good night. Good night. Bye. Hi. My name is Stephen King. I've written several motion pictures, but I want to tell you about a movie called Maximum Overdrive, which is the first one I've directed. <laughs> A lot of people have directed Stephen King novels and stories. And I finally decided if you want something done right, you ought to do it yourself. It was my first picture as a director. And you know something? I sort of enjoyed it. I just wanted someone to do Stephen King right. I'm going to scare the hell out of you.